Okay, so hello and welcome to this video. In this one we're going to be looking at this server, um, but not necessarily just the server, but the CPU um, that I've put in this. Now I've just upgraded this machine to an i7-4790. There's an issue with the CPU that I've put in it. A friend gave it to me, he didn't even know there was a problem with it. And so I've put it in here and the system started to beep an alarm. So the reason behind that being is there's actually an issue with the IHS. The IHS is the integrated heat sink which is this metal piece here on the top of the CPU. That is not properly connected to the actual CPU die. So what we're going to have to do is delid it using a delidding tool and reapply thermal compound, thermal paste underneath. I've got a delid tool here that I've purchased but first what I'm going to do is show you the problem. It's not all of the cores that are suffering, it's only a couple of them. Task Manager open here to show the usage. This is core temp. This just shows you the temperature of the cores. So you can see max is 100 degrees for this chip. And the uh, idle, it's sat around 30 degrees. This one core here is 41. That's hotter than the rest. You can see that's also at a max of 100. So if I run Prime95 here, which is a CPU test program, as soon as I run it, you'll notice that these temperature will rock it and it'll start to beep. We go straight to 90, 100 degrees there uh, on both of those cores. Now this is probably the offending core and it's probably causing this one to heat up as well. It's probably dried out in that area because these two are sitting fine. You can see that these are still climbing. These are okay. Now the chip's also throttling and drawing less power. You can see this is an 84 watt chip. It's only drawing 38 watts. That's because of the temperature issues here. It's throttling down to save itself. You can see it's not drawing full power, it's not running to the performance it could be, and those two cores are incredibly hot. So, what I'm going to do is take this apart, get the CPU out, we'll put it in the delete tool and break it apart. Hopefully not break or damage anything, but we shall see. This was purchased off Amazon, um, it wasn't very expensive, I think it was under £10 uh, for the deleting tool. So, and I think it's relatively universal, but this is 4th generation Hasbro. Okay, so here's the CPU itself coming out. And there she is. I mean, you wouldn't really know upon inspection that there's a problem. You can't actually see the separation anywhere, so it doesn't look like it's loose. Um, it could just be the thermal compound in here that's dried out, that's all. Um, but yeah, let's still it this thing and we'll have a look. Now, full disclosure, I've never actually done this before. This is the first time I'm doing it, so you're sort of coming along for the ride. Uh, it's entirely possible I'll completely break this thing. And if I do, then that's on me, my bad. And you should uh, know not to do whatever I did. <laughs> but um, we'll see. Okay, so I've got the deleting tool with the Allen key and the actual CPU itself out now. There's instructions here. Um, that came with the deleting tool. I've had a bit of a look online before, but this is just a cheap generic tool um, from Amazon, as I say. So, looking at this, the chip sits in that way with the IHS sticking out either side, and the instructions do continue on the back, turn it through, etc. So, it does have a note up here saying that before opening it, you can use hot air to heat it um, to soften the glue. So what I'm going to do is I've actually got a hot air a rework station here, a reflow gun. And I'm going to use that to warm up the heat sink on the unit at first. But I'll show you the tool first. So this comes apart and slides out. Then the CPU will sit actually in here. So you notice it's got these components on the bottom, the capacitors and resistors and things. Those will sit in that slot there and poke out underneath. So it'll sit sort of flat in the bottom, like that. Then this goes back in. You see that it's got these like slits in the end here. They'll go over like that. And this sits over the top of the green board on the CPU, the PCB, and just touches the metal there. So if I take this bolt out of the way. You see how it's touching the actual metal and not the board? That's how it should be. It'll sit over the top because we're pushing the metal off the CPU board itself. So first of all, I'm going to take this out. And I'm just going to preheat it. So 
we'll get the hot air gun in. I'm just going to sort of fold this down on the CPU for a little while. Just to heat the thing up. I have seen people do this without preheating them and it's still come off, but I think this way it just requires a little less force. Um, it won't really do any damage or anything, so. It's getting hot to the touch now. This gun set to about 200-250 degrees C, so. I'll probably do us. I'm not going to go too ham with it. It's relatively hot now, so we'll put it in the tool. And then we'll put the end piece back on, making sure again that it's sitting over the board, not at the side of it. Because if you crush the PCB, you will be in trouble. Let's do this Allen key up as far as I can by hand. So that's now just starting to pinch on the end. So let me unplug the hot angle. So now, we've just got to tighten this thing up, theoretically. Now apparently you need an uncomfortable amount of pressure to do this. And it'll give just when you're starting to feel really, really like it's too much. It can either be a pop noise, or it might just slip slightly. So we shall see. It's actually really tight. I'm just taking it gently and easy. Oh, something give. I'm going to turn a bit more. I think that might have given it. Looking down the side here. You can now see this black, so I think the top layer may have come off. If I move that now, you can see a bit more blocky appearing. So I'm going to take it out. I don't want to overdo it. So I'm just going to take this out first, and I'll just try and see if that seems to have separated any. As I say, this is my first time doing this as well, so... Seems as though it could have slid. I think it might need a touch more of that. I think it's just getting there. Let's try a little more on it. Again, make sure that that's going over the top. Oh, I've got thermal compound all over me. Okay, that's definitely separate now. So it's gone easier to turn, and there's loads of black sticking out there, loads of the adhesive. So I'm going to take this out. If you look there now at how much adhesive you can see, the top has definitely moved. I've got something to lift that with. I should have been prepared. small screwdriver here this uh, just to see if it does lift or move any oh we can see that it's coming apart I don't know if you can see that little hole there that gap could do something smaller I think that seems to be a finer point just uh, gently working it loose I'm not applying much pressure here I'm literally just sort of picking very slightly oh I can now hear it peeling and that's more of the adhesive coming off see how loose this is now Now before I take this off, I'm just going to pay attention to 
the gold triangle there is in the bottom left corner so we know which way to put this back on I'm not sure as to whether the orientation matters that much but and there we go so we've now got the IHS the heat integrated heatsink which is this piece and this is the CPU itself with the die that is the actual thing that generates the heat and this just has thermal paste on it there that takes the heat away now something probably worthy of note now is that a lot of CPUs this is soldered directly on so you won't have this problem anyway um, but it won't dry out and if you try and delete it you'll actually crack and break the CPU die itself so it'll be no good this deleting only works because of it having thermal paste thermal compound here and this sort of silicon goop around the edge here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean both of these up so I'm going to take all this thermal compound off here I'm going to also try and remove a lot of this goop silicon stuff from here and I'm going to clean up the CPU here and try and pick off this all around the edges here you can sort of get your finger under it and I think this in combination with a little screwdriver I'll probably be able to pick most of it off either that or I might get a uh, a very sharp Stanley knife blade and just sort of skim it along the top being careful not to do too much damage to the board and also being careful of all these resistors that are here because if you catch and break one of these off then that's going to be game over and the CPU will be dead as well so just be very careful as you, you clean and prep in this but we're going to have to take some of this off anyway at least get rid of the most of it to make the heatsink sit back on again now you can also either reattach this sort of use some form of glue or adhesive to stick it back down or you can just put the thermal compound on and put the top on and leave it loose I'm probably going to leave it loose for testing purposes and I'm also not going to be taking it in and out of the motherboard very often so it doesn't really matter to me, I'm just going to do it that way. Just a quick um, worthy of note here, I've just come to clean in the IHS, the thermal compound, and just look at how dry this is. It's well had its day, see it's just breaking off into pieces as opposed to actually um, wiping off. Look at that. So yeah, this is uh, where we're having issues with temperatures on this particular cause because part of the paste is very dry okay so a bit of an update uh, I've actually cleaned the IHS now off so you can see there it's not perfect there's still some like little bits in here that you can see you know sort of remains a match from the adhesive I mean you could sand this down um, with, with fine sandpaper if you wanted to to remove all of the bits and pieces but I'm not going to go quite to that extreme. Uh, the main area that you've got to make sure is clean is the contact area in the middle here, which is well clean. Uh, and there's no depth, like I've got the bulk of it off the top. It's just little marks. So it's not going to interfere with putting this back on theoretically. So that's done. Now I did that using um, very small, fine screwdrivers. You can see there potentially if the camera would focus. Um, very fine blade screwdrivers and just scraping it. I've got a couple of different sizes here at the side of me. So now I'm just going to do the CPU and I've just started on this. You should be able to actually see um, where I've removed some here. And this is all the crap that's that's come off at the side here. Just out of shot. That's just off the IHS. There's a load more as well but anyway. So what I'm doing for this, you can see I've removed a section there and I've not really scrapped or scratched anything. I'm just getting the screwdriver and I'm going sort of finding where there's a lump and going under it like this and sort of spudging it up bit by bit. I'm not really applying pressure because you would be scratching the board if you were. I'm just sort of pushing sideways like that just to pick it off and eventually it does fall apart and crumble. And that's the way that I'm choosing to do this. So I'm going to carry on with that and I'll come back and update you once we're done. So, I've now cleaned the IHS up, and I've also cleaned the CPU itself up, which is here. So, there's still some marks here. These are actually stains. If I run my finger over it, it's smooth. 
it's just sort of staying in on the board I think there's a little bit I can feel here um, but not very much I've actually cleaned it all and then I've even gone over and sort of just lightly scraped the top of it again so you can see I've not marked and scuffed the board to death or anything because all of these little lines here are traces you can just about see them you can scratch a little bit off but like it's not advisable if you can avoid doing it and spend the extra time that's the better way so we're ready to start putting this thing back together you notice I've cleaned the die itself as well oh it's very shiny and reflective so that's good we're going to apply a new thermal paste onto here put this back on and put this thing back together in the CPU socket and see if that's made any difference. First of all, I'm going to clean all this rubbish off my desk here. You can see there's all these bits that have come off the CPU. And we don't want any of these getting back into it. We want it as clean as possible when we put this thing back together. So I'm going to throw all this away and hoover the bench down. And then we'll start reassembling. Okay, so that's everything cleaned and clear. I've got the CPU back with that triangle in the bottom corner. I've got the IHS here. The right way up and they're both clean so you can see that's very clean there and the back of this is all clean it's been wiped down i've got some noctua thermal compound so i'm going to apply this might be a little bit overzealous with that piece there that i put on but we'll see this is a uh, non-conductive. So it's not gonna actually short anything out if we do put a bit much in. Um, so, and we can always take the lid off and reapply it if this goes wrong, but. So I'm gonna line up the IHS again. So I'm looking at roughly the marks from before, making sure it's the right way around and making sure that you're clear of these resistors the most important thing so that's why we look at this mark so you can see the edge here goes over that one there and comes up to these dots here so I'm just gonna place this and then sort of smush it down a bit so that's now on but as I said because I'm not re sticking this it's going to remain loose so can you see how that moves there when I push it but that's fine so you just have to be cautious when you put in the cooler on and off that you've got this lined up and you don't disturb it so let's get this system back in we'll put this in and we'll have a look how it performs if it's any better surely it can't be any worse okay so now we're ready to put the CPU back in so I'm going to open the socket let's get the chip here, position that back in, make sure that's sat right, yep, put this back down, now the socket's going to clamp down on the IHS here, so just double check, make sure that it's lined up into about the right position, I'll try and get it square as well, and you can actually put your finger on it hold it still while you clamp down it is actually sliding over slightly but let me just try and readjust that a little right so I think that is about right there for where we're going to be let's just have a bit of a sanity check with this cooler obviously you've got that plate there that it's going to line up with and I can see yep that's just about right there let's put the bracketry back in for it and the screws back in for the cooler So actually, yeah, what I mentioned before about the CPU cooler taking the IHS on and off, um, it actually turns out it won't because the socket holds the IHS in place, uh, as I've just shown you when I was putting it, the retaining arm down. Um, it actually holds the heatsink 
down so it's not going to pop off when I take the cooler off again, which is a good thing. So as long as the chip stays in this motherboard, I won't have to worry about it coming apart and having to repaste that. Right, let's turn this thing on. We'll already be able to actually tell that it's not reaching 100 degrees because when I turned this on previously, it was beeping just in startup because when it's loading windows and the CPU's working, it was getting mad hot. So as long as we get to the desktop without hearing any beeps, we'll be in good ground. Which so far it looks like we are doing. There we go. That's promising. So now, let's start by opening up Core Temp and we'll have a look at what we've got. So let's open up Task Manager. This also means the CPU is not dead, so I didn't kill it, which is a bonus. Let's change the camera position in a bit there so you can see better. So you can see now. We've got 34, 32, about 30 to, th oh, yeah. The temperatures are relatively close to each other. I'm going to stop trying to read them because they're going to keep going up and down. Around 95. And we'll just start that up. And already that's much better because we're not alarming. We're up to 67, 65, 62, 61 across the cores. You can see we've got 100% utilisation. It's even turbo boosted up to 3.78 gigahertz because clock for this is actually 3.6. The CPU fan is ramping up a little bit. Oh, it's core 71. Oh no, 69, 70, 68. So they're all staying very close. We're also using a lot more power. The package is at almost 60 watts. So yeah, I'd say that's a, a pretty successful run. I'm going to leave this for a few minutes and just see how hot it can get. And then I shall come back and update you. Uh, might be going on for 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, it's, it's doing good. We've got 86 degrees on the hottest core. Uh, maybe 87. And then we've got 85 there, 83, 81. So they're all staying within each other quite nicely. Uh, and it's not going extreme and throttling anymore. We're now drawing 68 watts, uh, and it's up to 3.8 gigahertz boost, or just under 3.8. But yeah, so I'm happy with that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like down below. Any questions or feedback, put them in the comment section. And if you'd like to see the video where I actually assembled this server system originally, a couple of years back then click in the top corner here i'll put a link to the video showing me building it so that's all for this one i'll see you in the next one